Welcome back once again, showcasing alternatives in free and open source software. Today, we're kind of kicking off a bit of a, a, an extended look over the coming weeks over some of the best options out there when it comes to best Linux distros that are lightweight. Lightweight meaning that you can run them on really old hardware. I think one of the best bonuses that the Linux world has over the generic uh, consumer mindset that a lot of tech tends to generate nowadays is that you can do an awful lot with an awful little if that makes any sense whatsoever today we're going to be having a look at peppermint os in its latest iteration now this desktop came out uh, at least in its current version back in i think february of 2022 so while i am months late to the game this is a perfect way to kickstart our series about some of the best lightweight options that exist in the linux world for installing and running on really old hardware now for the purposes of today's video i have set it up inside a virtual machine this virtual machine machine is 32-bit, not 64-bit, because yes, Peppermint has a 32-bit option available. I've given it 4 gig of RAM and 2 CPU cores to represent a pretty old PC. And the host PC that it's running on is a second generation i7 from the Sandy Bridge from 2011. So this is like a virtual machine running on an old device. And yet, we are still gonna see some pretty great results uh, from my early impression. So let's jump in, we'll poke around and we'll see what we can find out about this option of a lightweight Linux distribution. Okay, so Peppermint OS. Uh, originally, Peppermint OS was a it was a Linux operating system designed for uh, netbooks in that it got its start as a lightweight desktop to run on a limited hardware that was primarily designed to get you online. Uh, and the same can still be said about Peppermint. However, it's undergone several iterations over the years and it has ultimately uh, always generated this kind of Frankenstein approach to putting together a Linux desktop in that while it does use an awful lot of XFCE desktop environment uh, pieces, it doesn't just solely rely on what XFCE ships as standard. It also implements uh, a bit of cinnamon where it makes sense. So for example, in the file manager, uh, you get the option to use either Thuna, the default file manager, or Nemo, which is the one that comes with uh, Linux Mint and any desktop that runs cinnamon. It gives you a few more configuration options uh, for a core utility like a file manager. When it comes to the approach of the, of the Peppermint project, uh, over the years I've seen it go through several different iterations, but some consistent things remain. And that is a tool called ICE, which is going to be shortly renamed to something else, uh, which is a tool that, man uh, that allows you to create individual isolated browser profiles for different web apps. So again, harkening back to an era where uh, netbooks were designed to get you online and you could launch things through different uh, web apps. It's a surprising amount of uh, things that you can do nowadays purely through a web browser. And also they've attempted to create a very stripped back and lean on resources OS. Nowadays, compared to Peppermint OS releases of the past that were based on Ubuntu, this is now based on Debian Bullseye. Uh, so this allows the development team to have a much more stable base for developing their OS and allows them to not have to keep up with Ubuntu's uh, release cadence in that they can kind of roll out updates and, and releases when they are ready uh, and not feel the pressure there. It also gives the package base time to stabilize out and enjoy all the benefits that Debian uses get in terms of a slightly more upstream version of uh, a lot of the core packages leading to a lighter footprint and also critically 32-bit support that Ubuntu dropped some time ago. So for those users that are using uh, devices that are well over 10 years old at this point that only support up to 4 gig of RAM on a 32-bit uh, architecture, Peppermint OS is a great option for those users. Uh, even if we jump in here to HTOP and have a look at system usage, you can see that we're uh, using hardly any of the CPU cores. I've got a few things running in the background and we're only using 382 meg of the available four gig of RAM. 82 tasks are here launched at the moment and that's with me playing around here for a little bit before I hit the record button. So it is an impressively lightweight package and more importantly, the install, while the installer uh, for Debian can be quite fiddly at times, they have opted to use the Calamares installer because A, 
a lot of Linux users are familiar with it. And B, it gives you some great options to configure your install uh, footprint to what you want to get out of the desktop. So traditionally, while Peppermint OS was always designed to get you online through web apps, the installer gives you a great tree uh, drop down list approach of, uh, I guess, group packages or package groups that allow you to do different things with your desktop. So for example, you can see that there is uh, options here for uh, installing uh, different web browsers or different office suites or whatever it is from the installer so that when you boot into the desktop for the first time, the apps that you want to have, the functionality you want to have in your desktop is there ready to go. However, for those that don't want any of that, none of the install footprint is taken up by doing so. And so on a default installation, you can see here just with the uh, file system, if we have a look into disks, you can see See that uh, there's very little of this space that's actually taken up. I've got a 20 gig partition here and there's only three gig of that which is taken up which is incredibly impressive for a distribution that only came out this year. Uh, again, if the name of the game is to be lightweight then Peppermint has hit it on the head. Now another thing that they have done is they've uh, They've brought together a lot of the commonly used settings across all of their different desktop environment components and brought them all into one uh, settings hub called the Peppermint Hub. And obviously these point you towards the different uh, settings configurations in XFCE or their relative uh, locations wherever they might be. So if you want to configure the panel, it'll jump you straight into the XFCE panel configuration pa uh, window as opposed to having to navigate through the XFCE settings. Now, of course, you can do that if, the, if you're used to using XFCE, but it's just a, uh, I guess, a boiled down approach. Again, in, in a use case where you wanted to give this distribution to a grandparent or something, something like that and you know all they want to do is open up Chrome and uh, start browsing the internet this is the kind of thing that would allow them to do that very well uh, interestingly it also has quick links to uh, basically web app versions of a lot of things like FlatHub, app image the snap store the gnome store as well as a uh, as well as an ad blocker which runs in the background uh, it can download sources of uh, basically ads to block in, uh, in and throughout your web browsing experience, which I think is a really nice touch. Again, if you're gonna be, spent, be spending a lot of time online, then you may as well get something that helps clean up the online experience for you. Suggested packages, there are a uh, curated list of suggested packages, and this is very similar to uh, to what you get in the installation setup where you have checkboxes that here you can download and install. Uh, basically a curation of software that the Peppermint team suggests suits the platform well. Uh, most of these are lightweight, um, packages or they are ways that you can install more software. So for example, if you want to uh, enable snap packages, flat packs, or have the GNOME software store, you can go ahead and do all of that from this little Peppermint Hub. The update manager used to run, I believe, on the Linux Mint update manager, but considering that now they are running on a Debian base, they have uh, now opted to use a different update manager that's not quite as fleshed out as what the Debian, uh, as what the Mint update tool was. However, uh, because of the fact that it is running on Debian, you have a slightly more robust base to begin with. Okay, let's wrap this up. So who is Peppermint for? At the end of the day, Peppermint OS is best suited to those who have older hardware or they want to run a very lean system but still want to have a great online experience. Uh, you can see this from as soon as you boot up Peppermint with their welcome screen. You can install the web browser of your choice. You can download all the stuff that's made Peppermint Peppermint in the past, things like icon packs, wallpapers, etc., and some of the other custom Peppermint tools like the pep hub and the little update manager that they've used to replace the Linux mint update manager uh, are all good steps to provide Peppermint with a stable development base on going based on Debian bullseye as opposed to the Ubuntu LTS or any other variant of Ubuntu moving down the track. So I hope that this project is around for many years to come. And as I get further into this series of lightweight Linux distros, I'll be curious to compare some of these together and see which are their strengths and weaknesses and, uh, and sort of pit them against each other a little bit to try and give recommendations to you. So at the end of the day, if you're looking for a lightweight Linux distro that's good for browsing the web and it remains very stable and is works well on older hardware, including 32-bit, Peppermint OS is going to be the go. So let me know in the comments below about what other lightweight distros I should look into uh, further down the road that we can compare this one to. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.